just screw me. Okay, it's no good. I just need to get the next one. Okay. What's this thing? You guys are going online. Hold on. Alright, we got it. Let's see. Junior, you need some virtual message. Is that what it is? Okay, we got it. Okay, we got it. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Okay, we got it. Hold on. Do I need to slide? Do I need to slide over? If you want your mic, you can just turn it up. Okay, can you give me? Yeah, yeah, that's fine. Dance myself over here, and then if you guys want to sit right here. I see them now. Number 21, senior captain Alisa Maate. Number 24, yeah, she's senior wearing a penny. She's, oh. she's got to go and go. Number 25, senior captain Lily Steenhard. <laughs> and number 29, senior Kira Borton. If everyone will now please stand and remove your caps for the playing of our national anthem.
Alright, we're, we're good? good. Yeah. You're live. Welcome into Castile High School for senior night as the Castile Colts host the Gilbert Tigers. We're going to start off with our starting lineups first for your home Castile Colts. We have senior Morgan Lewis, Jenna Custer, Scarlett Fruithart, Georgia Jasper, Alejandra Flam, Rainy, Rainy Signs, Alejandra, Alexandra White, excuse me. Marissa Guevara, and last but not least, seeing her first action of the year so far, Kyra Borton, for the visiting Gilbert Tigers. We have in goal, Brennan Greer, Brooke Hastings, Leah Hellman, Elizabeth Watts, Grace Skelton, Sierra Koheiser, Katrina Kowitz, Aliyah Flores, Gracie Peru, Anna Ruffley, and Marley Randall. Castile comes into this game 6-0, 3-0 in their section, and first atop the 5 I San Santan region. Coming into this game, Gilbert is 3-2, 2-1 in their section, 2-1 on the road, kept picking up a victory in their last game over Williamsfield with a score of 4-0. I'm James Malamus, joined here with Emily Garman. Emily, Gilbert coming into this game, they're... Their season so far, it's gone win, loss, win, loss, win. Their games, they haven't been super close. Their first first game, win 8-0, loss 4-1, win 2-0, loss 3-0, win 4-0. Their closest game, 2-0. Coming into this game, what are you hoping to see from Gilbert? Well, speaking with Coach Ben Holzer before the game, he says his team is above average, but... They've been playing opponents either much better than them or much worse than them. And so he's probably comes in seeing Castile as one of the top comp opponents he's played. So right now, I think from, Cas from Gilbert, he hopes to see limiting Castile's goals would be good. He says one of his best players on the field is his center back, Sierra Koheiser, so looking for a great performance from her, a great defensive performance to limit Castile's goal will be the best option for this team. Castile, like you said, one of the best teams in the nation, top, ranked in the top three of the state. Of course, Pinnacle ranked number one undefeated on the season. Castile, last game, they played Higley, won 7-1 to one on the road. We were here last Friday for the game where they won what, do, what are you looking for at Castile coming to this game? Well, lots of goals. I'm hoping they're a really efficient, high-scoring team. They haven't scored less than two goals in any of their games. And so we hope to see a lot of offensive production from them. And it is senior night, so the seniors, Coach Jed, are going to be getting some minutes. And we'll see if they can have a great performance. Like you said, senior night, Kyra Borton getting her first minutes of the season. She's in goal right now. She's wearing a penny and no goalie gloves. You can see the goalie waiting to check in as Gilbert, they'll kick it out to allow that exchange. A little bit of good, friendly competition there. And the applause for Borton as she subs out. Coming into goal for Castile. That's the junior, Sarah Kaler. She had four clean, seats on, clean sheets on the season, 21 shots on goal. She's only allowed two throughout the whole season. Very impressive goalkeeper. Very That speaks for their defense as well. And Castile will give it right back to Gilbert. And we're underway. Castile... Their forwards not afraid to press. Always high tempo, high pressure by that team. As here's Georgia in the middle. Little through ball. You can see the speed by Lewis on the far side as the goalkeeper Greer is able to get it for Gilbert. But watch Lewis on that far side, one of the senior captains. Yes, she is a great runner. She runs track, varsity track here as well as playing soccer. And she plans to attend Seattle University to both play soccer and run track. So. Definitely has some speed outside, as does her sister, more <laughs> Natalie Lewis, the sophomore, who we might see get some minutes tonight. Ball knocked out of bounds there. As Gilbert would throw it in, knocked right back out. A thing to look for during warm-ups, we were on the sideline. 
Jenna Custer, a senior for Castile, one of those main parts in the middle. She seemed to roll her ankle. There she was there touching the ball. She's back. She's starting. She seems to be okay, but that's something to watch throughout the game. As that ball will roll out, and a little hesitation from the ref, but they'll give it to the Colts. What's impressive about this team is it is senior night, and a lot of new seniors are, are getting some minutes, but really, this team is, is a much older, experienced team, Castile is, so seeing a lot of seniors on the field is actually not that unusual. They, they have a lot of experience, and and a lot of good seniors, so we still still expect them to, you know, be a dominant team even without some of their key younger starters. Castile, eleven seniors on this roster, very old roster, like you said, no freshmen, only six sophomores and ten juniors. There was a foul there by Lewis, being aggressive on the offensive end. The ball really staying in the middle of the field right now. Both teams. Fighting for possession, no real chances yet for either team. And here's Lewis on the far side. Looking middle, but that's intercepted. And nice nice defense there by Castillo to keep the ball in Gilbert's end. A little bit of room now for Gilbert to try to advance the ball up, but again, great defense on the far side there. That's Marissa Guevara. Yeah, the ball has, has hardly passed the, the midfield line onto the Castile defending side. Been doing a good job of, of locking this ball into their offensive half. Both teams really looking for their first chance offensively as we have 36 minutes and about 20 seconds left here in the first half. Is it... A section matchup between Castile and Gilbert. Castile three and on their section. Gilbert two and one. Gilbert currently sitting third in the section. Castile first, and here's the ball on the near side. Castile fans getting a little rowdy, trying to cheer on their girls. Yeah, the bench for Castile is sure is making a lot of noise. These girls are excited to see all of their seniors play and just want to give them great energy for senior night as fan attendance is limited due to COVID-19. Ball whipped on the inside, no one home though. And Gilbert will clear for the time being. Gilbert looking for those through balls, not really there. Deciding to bring it up. They've got six players for it, but good defense there by Castillo. That's Maaka, one of the captains. Good footwork there by Sainz as she goes a through ball. A little too strong, though, and Greer will be able to take that in the goal. We love to see Maaka. Center back has been named 5A Defensive Player of the Year last year, and there she is joining the attack. She wanted that ball, wanted the, the opportunity to score. She don't get a lot as a center back, so... It's a very good movement from her. And here's the chance now. Here's Signs as she has one man to beat, but good defense there by Gilbert, knocking her off the ball. And it was cautious enough not to draw a foul there. If she would have given up a foul in that spot, would have had a good set piece chance for Castile, but good defense there and and the ball able to clear out for a throw in for Castile. That was really good defending by Castile, the, or by Gilbert, excuse me. Defender really got a good body on the ball and was able to slow signs down. That ball is attempted to be whipped in but knocked out of bounds and Castile will have their first corner of the night. They do a quick one. Here's Lewis with the whip. No one on that far post. That'll be a goal kick. Last time we were here last Friday night, they had a lot of different corner tactics. That one there, they were going for speed, a little a fast corner there. We didn't see that last time, but interesting to see if they continue those those kind of tactics. Yeah, it didn't seem like any of the players were making runs into the box, though, so I'm not sure if Lewis was supposed to be taking a shot there and just was a little off target or whether her offense didn't complete their runs, so they weren't able to get to the back post. There was a little through ball there from White with signs running onto it. Greer, the goalkeeper, out. 
The goalkeeper is playing against the Castile. We saw it last time with Shadow Ridge, this time with Gilbert. They have to be ready to come out fast because Castile has that speed. Lewis, we just saw signs there. We don't even have Natalie Lewis on the field right now, but she arguably is the fastest player on the field, Coach Jason Hammond said last time out. But uh, Castile, just a lot of speed all around, and goalkeepers have to be ready for that. At the same time, you know, Castile is not afraid to take shots from way outside the 18, so keepers need to be wary of being chipped by this team. They've got some great shots from, from outside of the box. Something to look out for when you're a goalkeeper against Castile. The worst of both worlds, you would say. Come on, girls! Gilbert with a little bit of pressure in Castile's half. Castile can't really get possession of it and clear it, and they'll have another throw in. Here's Hellman taking the throwman. And she throws it down. No one making a run for it. Bad clearance there. And a little tap. And that'll be controlled by Kaler and goal. They'll let the ball bounce, and that's dangerous with Lewis coming. Good shielding there by the Castile defense. Yeah, that was a good shield by Koheiser. Coach Holzer of Gilbert says he's their strongest player. She is a very good defender, very strong, and hasn't had any problem dealing with Castile's speed so far. She just bodies it up and makes them change pace. Just over half an hour left here in the first half. We've already seen Koheiser make two very impressive plays that arguably saved gold chances from Castile. As the ball go out, and here will be White with the throw-in. Better go back to her. Here's a little through ball. Looking for Lewis. Little error there, and she has it. Signs. Looks near side. Here's Jasper. Oh, pass a little in front of her, and that'll roll out. Jasper couldn't catch up to it. Throw-in. Ball knocked around. Here's Signs outside the 18 yard box. Koheiser steps in front. Nice tackle there from Koheiser. Clearance not good. Here's Custer long range shot saved. Brennan Greer, like you said, Castile not afraid to take those shots from outside. One thing to note is Custer. Like we said, spraying that ankle before the game during warm-ups, hit that with her left foot. It was her right foot that she sprained beforehand. So we'll have to see how, how good she is on it. Besides for Borton, Castile sticking with the seniors they have out there. It is senior night here at Castile High School. Castillo last, last season winning the 5A state championship over Ironwood Ridge. And here's a chance for Gilbert. Good defense there by Maka. And she'll be able to clear it out. And it goes to Lewis and she'll keep it alive. On the far wing now. Ball knocked out and Castillo will retain it. Here's Pro Hart working in the middle. Find signs. A little through ball on the flag will go up. That's Jasper standing off sides. A really good run by right defender White right here. She was screaming for the ball. You could hear her up in the press box, but unfortunately, uh, Fro Hart did not see her or, or went a different way, but I really thought a great one. She was wide open. Uh, Could have made a, an interesting play right there. 29 minutes left here in the first half. Castile with the only shot so far as this game has had good possession on each side. Here's Custer with the ball. Finds Lewis in the middle. There's Signs. And up to Jasper who gives it to Custer. And here's White. Cross into the middle. And the flag will go up again. Second offsides of the night on Castile. Oh, 
We'll have subs for both teams coming in at the next dead ball. And Custer with a lot of action so far in this game, right in the middle of the field. Look around. This is White who finds Custer again. Custer with her heads up. A little through ball, nice header. And Jasper will keep it alive. There's the clearance, and that'll go towards midfield. Ball knocked around, and Gilbert will get in. That's a through ball. Good defense there by Maaka to retain it. They were looking for Watts, the junior forward for Higley, or excuse me, Gilbert. Good pressure there. That's Frodehart winning the ball back for Castile. She's looking out for a little through ball. That ball, not enough pace on it. But Signs is still fighting for it. And Gilbert's able to get it away. Nice little one-two action there. Looking for Watts up top, but there's good defense. Subs now coming in for both teams. For Castile, it's Wheaton, Denninger, and Lewis coming on. Off comes Jasper. Guevara and Flam. There's a little ball. And it's Natalie Lewis who just came on next and makes a nice fake move one on one with the goalkeeper and she puts it away. That's a goal for the Castile Colts. Natalie Lewis comes on her first touch, and she shoots and scores. You really cannot compete with Natalie Lewis's speed and her impact on this game. She scored so far eight goals for Castile this season. She's their lead goal scorer. Make that nine goals now after that, like you said, first touch of the game is a goal. That's what you call instant impact off the bench there for Castile. Lewis able to put them up one nothing with 26 minutes left here in the first half on senior night. She is certainly an impactful player. In her last game versus Higley scored a hat trick. Let's see, she might be shooting for another one tonight. Here's Watts going through the entire Castile defense. That ball, though, will roll out of bounds. Can't handle it. It was just Watts versus about five of those Castile defenders. She had no, no help from her teammates, but they're able to wing the ball back, and they'll call that a foul there. A little aggressive. And then Ma'aka will take the free kick. So we'll go short. That's Denninger. In the middle now to Custer. Back to Steenhardt out wide. It's Denninger again. And they'll call a foul there right next to the right next to the box. So a good situation here for Castile. Great run made by Denninger there, getting up the field, joining the attack, and she's got something to show for it. Set piece for Castile is, is always dangerous. They are a high scoring team, and, and set pieces make it easier to score. Custer will take it for Castile. Whips it in, headed there by Koheiser, making yet another play for her team. Really a leader on that defense. Castile, though, they'll keep up the attack as White tries to knock it forward, but it's cleared away, and Ma'aka will retain it with Watts closing on her, but is able to get away. And that's Steenhardt who gets knocked down. And it looks like both players will have to come off as they collided going for that header. Hope both players are okay. Just 
an extra bit of precaution. Concussions are a big deal in the game of soccer. They happen more than you hear about. And uh, you now high school is high school administrations are trying to do their best to limit the impact of concussions. Here's Frohart now on the wing, not able to catch up to the ball as Koheiser will just let it roll out. Smart play there as we'll get the throw in. And Custer will win it back for Castillo, but then given it right back by Denninger. And that'll go out of play. Denninger leads Castillo in minutes played with 429 minutes. Right behind her, Alicia Maake with 425 minutes. So those two both playing defense very solid and reliable for this Castile team. Yeah, one of Castile's best aspects is all of their players are, are so very dynamic. So while Denninger and Mayake may be defenders in the lineup, they certainly do move around a lot. I mean, even Maake has two goals on the season. Um, so she's involved in the offense as well. And Denninger makes a lot of runs up the line and, and tries to get involved as much as she can offensively. Steele with the high pressure here. Good job by Gilbert all around. Their defense really, really stopping Castillo from getting any good looks except for that one that Lewis got and was able to capitalize on. Here she, here she is again. Looking now, she found Signs. Signs on the right wing, whips it into the middle. Morgan Lewis is there and she kicks it over the crossbar. No one went for it and rolled all the way to the back post and she had a, a pretty good look at it. Her body was a little twisted, but just got right under and kicked it over. Yeah, that is not the first nor last time you will see a player within <laughs> six yards of the, uh, six, yeah, yards of, of the goal kick one over. Uh, it happens a lot, and it is sad. Gilbert now with a little pressure from their forwards, but it's white on his near side. Custer in the middle, almost loses it, but gives it back to White, who will clear it down. And the flag will go up. That signs who is offsides. The third offsides of the game for Castile. Very offsides so far from Castile, but you like the aggression from them. Sometimes you'd like them to be more disciplined so that they don't come offsides, but Gilbert's defense, they've been they've been pretty good, led by Sierra Koheiser. We've said her name so many times before tonight. But They've been very, oh, and here's a through ball now. It's Morgan Lewis, one-on-one -on -one with the goalkeeper, and she'll shoot it wide. Gilbert is playing a, a stopper-sweeper formation here on their defense, having having one deep center back and one forward center back uh, stopper. And it's hard because if that stopper gets beat ever, you know, there are three, de they're, then they're playing with essentially three defenders. And, and with this speed against Castile, it, 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 it's hard to play like that. But I mean, as we said, Koheiser is so, is so strong in that, uh, in that sweeper position that, you know, it, it might work out. Ball kicked back towards the middle of the field, and that's Watts for Gilbert with it. As Castile picks up the pressure, headed around, retained by Gilbert, but then it's Cusser who comes away with it for Castile. Big swing there, but a nice block by Kowitz as she takes it by herself and starts dribbling up. Looks like she was looking for a through ball there. But her teammate, I believe that was Gracie Peru, seemed to have been offsides and didn't go for it. As it's cleared down and it's Signs who takes it for Castile. A little fancy footwork and she flicks it up. Looking for Lewis, but it's headed away.
Good defense there, and it's stolen by Castillo. That was Wheaton. And a call a foul there on Gilbert. That's their fourth one of the game so far. 18.55 to go here in the first half. Castillo leading 1-0 with a goal by Natalie Lewis, who came on in her first touch right in front of the net, put it away one-on-one -on -one with the keeper. And Maaka will take the set piece free kick. Whipped in. There's Frohar with the ball in the box. And the flag will go up again. That's the fourth offsides now by Castillo. Castile averaging 4.7 goals per match, only giving up 0.34 to the other team. So they, when they win games, they win them pretty handedly. Castile, one of the top teams in the state. And here's Gilbert now, looking to try to get on the board. As Maaka comes away with it, Senior captain finds another senior captain. That's Lewis on the far wing. Tries to get past the defender, but kicks it, and it goes just too far. Gilbert has been doing a fine job controlling the ball, but just haven't been able to execute on that final third. Here's Watts. Good slide tackle there by Denninger, who stays down. And... The refs will stop the play to take a look. Denninger, like we said earlier, leads the team in minutes. The junior defenseman, very important for the team. And she's down now. And Steele will look to make a sub. It'd be really sad to lose a player like Denninger. She is so impactful on this team, such a strong part of their defense and, and really gets involved a lot on their offense. He's heading off the field to the trainer right now. A couple of substitutions for Castile. Coming on, Rustard. Steenhart, good to see. She'll be making her appearance again. And for the first time tonight, we see Tori Brown. Denninger, like you said, such an important part of the defense, as we saw there. Watts from Gilbert made a good move, got past her. Denninger didn't give up on the play. Had a nice slide tackle. She got roughed up, but it helped stop the play there. Seems uh, Tori Brown has entered the game as well. Another big scorer for the steal. And they signs will head back into the midfield. Tori Brown, three goals and three assists on the season. Last time we were here against Shadow Ridge, we saw her come on in the second half and really kind of play that center forward role for Castile, getting the ball up forward and making plays. So we'll see if they look for her here again as the set piece knocked away, but still loose in the box. And a good clearance here. Good goalkeeping there by Kaler. And here's Tori Brown right on cue. That ball will be knocked out, but Castile picking up the pressure, trying to go on the counter attack. That could have been a dangerous counterattack too as Poe Heiser was up for that set play and really just turned on the wheels to sprint back and be a part of the defense. Signs whoop it into the middle, but that's cleared away. Good defense there by Gilbert. Stolen in the middle, that's Tori Brown making defensive plays as well. And she cuts it inside and Gilbert we called for another foul. That's their fifth one of the game as Another good opportunity here for Castillo with a set piece. Yeah, Gilbert would do well to, to limit their set pieces given up. Castillo is dangerous on the set pieces. Especially in this part of the field, both we've seen two set pieces right outside the box on the wings, kind of like corners, a little bit more up the field, but just giving Castillo more chances to cross it in. And White will take it this time for the Colts. As she sets, she whips it in. Good distance on the ball, headed down, go wide. That was Frohart there meeting it with her head, but just missing the target. 
did a good job to head that ball down instead of up, but just moved outside of the, the goal post. Just over 15 minutes left here in the first half as Castillo leads 1-0. Here's the goal kick, knocked around. Nella Lewis, it's deflected by Koheiser. Ball still knocked around, here's Tory Brown in the box. Takes goes outside, whips a shot, nice save right at the goalkeeper. That's Brennan Greer with the save. Tory Brown is just a really great offensive player. She does a good job of, of receiving the ball for Castile and then holding on to the ball until she's done what she's wanted to do with it, whether that's set a pass up or, or take a shot. She, she hardly ever loses the ball. On the outside, it's White as they're on attack again. Good pass there. She finds Natalie Lewis on the wing. Good defense there by Gilbert. They've had some good tackles in the open field. They've been doing a great job on defense, uh, really limiting what Castile is doing, but haven't been able to, to counterattack so much on their on their defensive wins. Uh, Lewis tried to whip it in there, miss hit the ball, and that'll go off for a goal kick. Castile so far six shots, three on target, two two good saves by Greer and Nat, the junior goalkeeper. Ball headed up, strong header there by Signs. And it's Frohart who will punt it away. Along the far wing, that'll bounce out. And Rustard will take the throw in. In the middle of the field, Captain Steenhard, who looks, finds White with a nice ball on the near wing. Tory Brown went for the through ball there. To Lewis, who wasn't ready for it. Good idea, though. Honestly, surprised Natalie Lewis didn't go after it there with her speed. I think she, she may have got it, but apparently she didn't feel the same. Didn't complete her run. I thought it was a pretty decent ball by Tori Brown. Yeah, my initial reaction was that ball was too hard hit, but once it hit the ground, it seemed to have slowed down a little bit. So I think, like you said, maybe she could have got it, but we'll have a goal kick. Nice touch there by Sines, and it's Tory Brown trying to get around the defender. Good job shielding him off. And they'll win it. That was a good job, like you said, shielding it off by Hastings, but she just didn't clear the ball out. White, she'll whip it in near the edge of the box. Nice touch there by Frohart. Brown in the middle, left footed. Another save there by Greer, getting a lot of action early here in this game. Like we just saw there, Brooke Hastings, the senior defensive player, sh really shielding these Castile players. We've seen Koheiser do it a couple of times, but just really good job all around by this defense of Gilbert so far. Well, they know that with Castile's speed, especially by the Lewis sisters on the outside, they know the best thing they can do is, is get a body on these girls and, and limit their ability to complete their runs. And so really they've been doing a good job of, like you said, just bodying up and making sure these, these girls can't stay on the ball and, and run with the ball because they know that they'll be beat by their speed. Here's Maaka deep in her own end who finds Steenhart as Castile resets. Back up, Steenhardt in the middle. Oh, she was looking for Frohart, but Frohart wasn't ready for it. That one's knocked out of play there by Anna Ruffley. A little misheader, and Lewis heads it up to Tori Brown. Ball bounces over her head, though, and here's Koheiser. Goheiser coming up with the ball herself, making a deep run. Nice pass there. A little tipped around, and they'll get it back in the middle, and we see Koheiser running back to get on defense. Koheiser, one of the key pieces for this Gilbert defense, so they, they need her back there. Good interception there as she looks up. 
Ball a little too far. Maake will let it roll out for a goal kick. Surprising I didn't see Watts kind of make more of an attempt there. She was coming from the far side. I don't think it was intended for her, but she seemed to have had a good angle to get there. She didn't exactly go for it. Gilbert now with a high pressure in Castile's half. As Taylor will boot this one towards midfield. Knocked around, and here's Steenhart with it. Finds Frohart. You can tell Frohart from the other players because she rolls those sleeves up. She does indeed, and she's also got the bright lime green shoes. Here's Tori Brown with some room. Whips it in. Nice save there by Greer, but the ball's still loose. Greer caught to the side of her goal. Wasn't exactly in the middle. Tori Brown noticed it. Let the shot go, but good recovery, the recovery there by Greer. When you're a goalkeeper, if you get a touch on, even just a touch on the ball to misdirect it, like that's a good save. Very well done by Greer. Castile, their second corner of the night. Castile's already had eight shots, five of them on target. Some great keeping, we're, great goalkeeping we're seeing here from Greer. This ball's whipped in, met by Maaka. Why? Nice save there. And tipped up near the goal. Greer will lose it right in front. That's Steenhardt. Able to recover it and not get in. The mistake by Greer will put Castile up 2 0 with just over nine minutes left here in the first half. Yeah, that was that was surprising. I thought Greer had, had a good hand on it. She just bobbled the ball, uh, unfortunately, right in front of the goal. And credit to Steenhardt. I mean, she did a she did a good job following up. Oftentimes, we see you know players don't complete their run complete their runs when they see that the the goalie has it. But she was just in the right place at the right time. And Greer, fortunately, just dropped the ball. Lily Steenhardt, one of the senior captains on this squad, scoring her first goal of the season. We were just raving about all the great saves Greer's made tonight so far. And she just bobbles that one. Looks like she is upset, maybe coming off the field, or maybe she got hit in the head, or... Oh, there we go. She's getting a penny, putting a penny on. Apparently, the colors of her black jersey are too close with that of the dark blue of Castile. Maybe some confusion there between her and her players. She was communicating with the ref. Interesting that they're just now making her put okay. it on almost almost all the way through the first half, but... Well, it wasn't a problem until then. It wasn't a problem until they unfortunately had that goal scored, so... Maybe some miscommunication between her and her center back uh, brought the problem to light. So now she's wearing a red penny. 2 nothing now in Castile as they lead. That was the 30th goal scored by Castile this season. Still only conceding two. The first goal this year by Steenhardt, who's a captain. She scored, fun fact, she scored seven goals last year. So... It's probably been working really hard one in one after a season where you score seven. She's eager to get one, and she did tonight. Really a, a vital piece of that, the center of the Castile team. Not usually up the field, but with that corner kick there, she's got the chance to. And Maaka with the hard kick back towards middle center field. A little collision there. And... They'll go back to the Castile with the fans getting rowdy with their team up 2 0 right here at Steel High School on senior night. Eight minutes left in the first half. Seems there were some words exchanged between uh, Natalie Lewis and Aaliyah Flores after that foul. So Castile, <laughs> Castile bench is getting a little rowdy trying to defend their player. Steenhard, nice idea there with that through ball, but just a little too far. Gilbert will get the free kick. Okay. 
Gilbert, like we said earlier, three and two on this season, just alternating wins and losses so far. Win, loss, win, loss, win their last game against Williamsfield by a score of four nothing. So looking to put a little streak together tonight, but going up against one of the best teams in the state in Castile. As fighting for the ball there, Signs will draw the foul. That's the seventh foul on Gilbert compared to just one from Castile. Steenhart, not the best pass intercepted, but good fight there by Morgan Lewis to get it back. Rusted, finding Torrey Brown weaving through the defense. Nice pass there. That's Signs at the top of the box. Swings it far side. Here's Natalie Lewis, the sophomore. Middle to Signs, but that shot is deflected. And he'll kick it up. Watts with a little flick over. It's good defending by Maake and, and Wheaton as Maake stepped forward to try and win that ball. Uh, Wheaton dropped back, you know. She probably could tell that uh, the ball was going to go over Maake's head. Good coverage by, by Wheaton. Rusted with the throw, and Rusted came in for Dedinger, who went down on a slide tackle, yet to return to the game, so we'll keep an eye on that still. As Gilbert now with the ball, looking for some, some sort of offense. They've had no shots on goal yet. Here's a little ball over the top looking for Watts, but cleared away by Maake. Cleared away there by Wheaton. I've got to say, I've been really impressed how how Gilbert really uh, goes into their tackles hard. They really stick their tackles, and uh, it's not it's it's a really great quality uh, that players get injured when they don't go into tackles hard. But uh, Gilbert has been has been doing a good job of sticking to their tackles and really uh, showing Castile how tough they are defensively. Not intimidated at all by the six and zero powerhouses that is Castile. Gilbert putting up a fight. There's another strong tackle there by Watts. But it's Castile on the counterattack with Brown. She has both Lewis sisters on each side. Nice deflection there by Koheiser. And the flag will go up again as the fifth offsides on Castile. Yeah, Koheiser is really just a, a wall back there. Anytime the ball goes near her, she, she lets it hit her. She kicks it out. She's, she's been doing a really good job. Another goal kick by Greer. And a bad pass there is intercepted by Brown, who is looking to get it to Lewis. But who else is there other than Koheiser? And we'll have a whistle here. Seems like it was a hand ball. A ref uh, slapped his wrist, indicating he saw one of the Castillo players hit it with their hand. Under four minutes left here in the first half. Castillo leading 2 nothing with goals by Natalie Lewis and Lily Steenhard. As the Colts will reset their offense. Here's Wheaton on the near side. Her ball deflected. And Gilbert will get a chance now. Good pressure there by Castillo. Throwing. Here's Frohar with the ball in the middle. Nice defense there by Flores who takes it away. A little one-two and she gets it back. Ball up. Looking for Watts. But the Castile defense there. Not able to clear it fully away. As that ball will be kicked and easily taken by Kalor in net. Steel, nice ball movement all around. And here's Frohart with some room to run. Cuts back. Brown at the top. Far side now. Here's Signs. 
couple touches. A little fancy footwork gets around the defender, whips it towards the middle. There's Morgan Lewis as she puts it away. Her second goal of the season. Great play there by Renee Signs on the wing. She's been looking for it all night. She she had a couple opportunities. If you remember, she she had a shot early in the half, and then she had one that she hit over within the six yard box. So she's been working all night to get that goal, and there she is. She finally got it. Renee signs. That's her now team leading fifth assist of the season. Great play there on the wing. Got around. The senior Hastings, who's been playing a very good game for Gilbert. Hastings, Koheiser, that whole Gilbert defense has been playing a really good game so far. Sainz is able to get around Hastings there and set up Lewis right in front of the goal. Yeah, and unfortunately, like you said, Gilbert has, has been playing pretty solid, solid defense, but unfortunately when you look at the score, you wouldn't... You wouldn't assume that. Um, they do have some very strong defenders and Hastings and Koheiser, but unfortunately the Castile forwards, the Castile offense is just is just really solid. Ball's knocked around. You saw Flores there a moment ago. Take a take a shot from distance. Really just test Kaylor, who hasn't really seen a lot of action tonight, but she was able to take care of that one. 3-0 here in the first half. Just a minute left to go on senior night here at Castile High School. A section matchup between the Gilbert Tigers and the Castile Colts. As Gilbert now, nice little footwork. Good defense there by Maaka, but the Tigers able to retain it here on the far side. Ball towards the middle, but Watts is not able to get there as that one's cleared away by Wheaton. I mean, Gilbert, even so, has, has been doing a good job uh, controlling the ball. They have been connecting passes and, and moving the ball into the, the final third, but really their execution, like I said earlier in the final third, is just not on, just not on tonight. They either are taking shots from way too far out or are trying to play these long through balls that will just not work against the Castile defense. So really, if they can connect their passes going into the next half, continue to connect their passes, but but do so within the final third and, and get that good shot or good opportunity, you know. They're not completely out of this game yet. They can still score. And that'll do it for the first half here. Castile leading Gilbert three to nothing with goals by Natalie Lewis, Lily Steenhard, and Morgan Lewis. Three nothing here going into the half. The score might not show up, but like you said, it's been a competitive game and and Gilbert, they've been playing some stout defense led by Brooke Hastings and Sierra Koheiser, just to name a few of them. So, Castile really dominating so far the offensive end. Ten shots, seven of them on, seven of them on goal, resulting in three goals. Gilbert only one shot, one on target. That was that long-range shot there by Alia Flores. Coming into this second half, Gilbert going to have to make some adjustments, like you said. No, not really connecting with the passes in the offensive end. Kind of just long through balls that haven't really been working. But their defense, their defense has been pretty stand up, except for a couple mistakes. Besides for the passes, what what do they need to continue to do to keep themselves in this game? Well, like I said, they just need to continue to connect the ball and. and be really strong on defense. And I, they can't really cannot let Castile get any more goals, and they need to find the back of the net for themselves. Castile only have given up two goals on the season. Again, another clean sheet through the first half. Good defensive play, good offensive play. Both Lewis sisters scoring a goal. They, they've been dominant all year. Kind of same question. What do they need to do to to continue this dominance going in the second half? Well, I'm sure they want to see a couple more goals, especially from some seniors on senior night, and uh, they definitely want another shutout. They're our fifth one of the season, I believe, so they're just searching for that. And right now uh, they've got it in the bag, so they're just going to keep doing what they're doing. 
three nothing Castillo with goals by Natalie Lewis, Lily Steenhard, and Morgan Lewis. Halftime here in Queen Creek, Arizona. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back with the second half of Castile versus Gilbert. Namesake, Dr. Camille Castillo.
first home or second, or refinancing, Academy Mortgage is the East Valley's go-to expert. Ready to serve you 24-7, Brandon Harwood and his team can help you with all your home mortgage needs. Conventional, FHA, VA, Jumbo, down payment assistance, even an extra 1% grant towards closing costs for first responders. Academy Mortgage, friendly, professional, happy to serve. Mention this ad for a $500 credit towards appraisal or closing costs. our corporate sponsors this evening, Sonoran Smiles. Sonoran Smile Orthodontics offers orthodontic treatment to all ages. We have four locations across the valley, excellent patient care in a warm and caring environment. We offer traditional bases and Invisalign therapy. Consultations are complimentary. Call 480-988-0028 to schedule or visit our website at sonorasmile.com. Another sponsor, Appreciative Wealth Management. <laughs> Appreciative Wealth Management is a boutique financial advising firm that provides a personalized client experience, combining financial planning with investment management. Call Ann Martin at Appreciative Wealth Management today because money doesn't come with instructions. The number to call there is 480-799-8188. Welcome back to the second half here at Castile High School for the Castile Gilbert girls soccer matchup. I'm Emily Carmen here with James Malamus. Malamus. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> You're good. My fault. Didn't want to pronounce it wrong or offend you. Here at Castile, we are the Castile Colts are up three to nothing going into the second half. We've had goals by the Lewis sisters, that's Morgan Lewis and Natalie Lewis and by senior captain Lily Steenhard. Meanwhile, Gilbert has been playing great defense so far and but has not seen any offensive opportunities really only having one shot and one shot on goal through the entire first half. What do they need to do, James, to get on the board tonight? Well, like we touched on in the first half, they really need to connect some passes in the offensive end. They're kind of just getting the ball near midfield, turning and kicking through balls, launching through balls, waiting for Elizabeth Watts to run onto it. But it, it hasn't really worked out. This Castile defense, they're too too experienced, too disciplined to let that happen. So I would I want to see them connect some passes, really get some build-up play in there to try to advance the entire team more into the Castile, the Castile end. Yeah, and it's not just the Castile defense that is experienced. It's pretty much the entire Castile team. It is senior night here, and so all of their seniors saw minutes tonight, and many of their seniors are already starters and already get a lot of minutes. So we're going to continue to see that today as the second half kicks off. We've got 40 minutes to go. We'll see if Castile can put more, more numbers on the board and whether Gilbert will, will get any themselves or will they be able to keep Castile at Three and zero right now. Castile starting with the ball this half goes out to Morgan Lewis, who didn't get a touch on it, but moving around the Castile defense right now as they try and build from the back. One thing that I did notice is Denninger, who went down in the first half, had to come out as yet to return to the game. It's still Riley Rustard back there, who's been doing a good job, but Denninger leads the team in minutes. It, it's, it's a hard blow for them. Yeah, it was a big loss. Corin Denninger came out with a after slide tackling to to prevent a, a save. Oh, here's Morgan Lewis with a chance on goal. 
That was a good save by Greer. Greer came out. Morgan Lewis still with it tonight. She looks for a cross. It's cleared out by Gilbert. But Castile still with possession. There's Russ Sab came in for Denninger, as we were saying. She's now driving at the goal. Tries to get a cross in. She still retains possession of it, battling with the Gilbert defender. And there we go, Gilbert finally got it out, but the ref did call a foul there on Rustad. Rustad has been playing well tonight. Um, she's not a starter, but she, she's getting some minutes here tonight after, like we said, Denninger. And excuse me, I made a mistake. That foul was called on Gilbert, and now Castile will have a set play. Very dangerous spot right outside the 18-yard box right there on the wing. We've seen a couple, couple fouls from Gilbert in those areas. Jenna Custer serving the ball in. She sends the ball out to the top of the box. Waiting there is Marake, the senior captain. Custer with the ball again. A good fake there. She crosses it in. And that looked like a deflection. But a goal from Castile. Their fourth of the night. I believe they will. It is Scarlett Prohart celebrating there, but it did seem like it deflected off of the Gilbert defense that was Skelton, it looked like. Can't say for sure, but in any ways, it, it's a goal for Castile. They're up 4 0. Yeah, good good play there by Custard Make. Able to keep possession for them. Custard whips it into the middle and just bodies all around. It hit off one of the Gilbert Tigers, and then unfortunately it goes into the back of the net. Nothing Greer there can do. Castile still keeping up the pressure there. Never one to back down. They will win every game by as many goals as possible. So they're going to keep pressing this Gilbert team. We'll see if Gilbert can respond. That's Watts with the ball. She tries to play it to her fellow forward, but it's blocked by Castile. There's Skelton sending it back up the field. And won again by Castile. Natalie Lewis with the ball plays it outside to Renee Sines. Sines trying to beat Gilbert's top defender out there. Koheiser. That shot there goes just outside of the goal. Yeah, you saw Sines there on the wing, like you said, trying to beat Koheiser. Koheiser playing that central center back. That, her role, she was forced out there side to the wide there, so good possibility for Castile to attack up the middle with Goheiser outside, but that, that pass, no one there on the other side of it. Here's Greer with the goal kick. Good kick. One by her own team. It's Sabado sending it up the field. But again, won by the Castile defense. They're going to control it in the back, play the ball back to Kaler in goal, who will send it forward. Steele trying to settle it down here, but won by Gilbert. Gilbert in control of the ball now. Oof, a bad touch there by Skelton. Koheiser has to clear it quickly. There's Watts, won that ball out of the air, took down a Castile player with it. Here she is driving a goal, got a cross in. But Taylor there with an easy catch, nothing came of it. The Castile player is up. That was Wheaton, I believe, for Castile, who went for that ball there, but then went to the ground. Good to see her getting back up. She looks like she's okay. But uh, one of the best chances we've seen tonight from Gilbert so far, Watts able to beat the defender on the outside, whip the ball into the middle. Unfortunately for Gilbert, no one there to get a touch on it, so Kaler was t able to take it easily. Oh. There's a flick on for Natalie Lewis by a Gilbert player, not even her own teammate, but a missed header. Flicked it on. Or Natalie Lewis ran after it as fast as she could, but Greer got a now we have a yellow card on the field. That was Aaliyah Flores. She had a 
couple of fouls there in the last half. She she is a very aggressive player, has been getting her body onto some of these Castile players, and now she fortunately has a yellow card, had to step off the field. Ake takes the kick and plays it outside rather than sending it in. That's Alexandra White with the ball, I believe, trying to drive down the right side. She did very well, sticking with the Gilbert defender, but kicked it out rather than caught it getting across it. And that was good defense there by Brooke Hastings. We've been saying her name a lot, Hastings and Goheiser, for that Gilbert defense. There you can really see Hastings boxing out, like a basketball move, boxing out so that they couldn't really get a good foot on the ball and it resulted in a, in a goal kick. Yeah, they've been doing that a lot this half, trying to get their body onto these Castile players and slow their speed down. Gilbert has a throw in now. Gilbert really just trying to, to control the ball better, hold the ball this half. And haven't really been able to with the Castile's high, high pressure on the team. Yeah, Castile really gives you no no moments of rest. It seems like every time the ball comes to you, there's a Castile player on your back fighting for the ball. Yes, and both teams have, have been really been fighting for the ball well, tackling well, going in hard to these plays. Um, it has been a battle out here this evening. Seems there is a foul called. One of the Castile players, Gilbert, will have a free tip kick from the half line. This is Koheiser with the kick. Let's see, which will probably send it in. That has been what Gilbert seems to be doing this evening. They just try and send balls through and, and hope for the best. It's not a strategy that's been working so far against Castile, but one that they will stick to. Yeah, it's kind of a, a hit or miss strategy. So at any moment, they could have the big ball break through, but. Unfortunately, they haven't had the chance tonight. Sabado, good win by her in the middle of the field. She plays it outside. But to no avail, goes out of bounds. Castile will throw the ball in. I believe that's Bennett out there on the wing for Gilbert who came on for Aaliyah Flores who picked up that yellow card just a moment ago. Gilbert sending the ball in. No one's on the end of it. There's Kaler. She throws it outside. To Rustad. Rustad sends the ball down the line. Here's Signs with one player to beat. Unfortunately, that player is Koheiser but she's still after it. Renee, Renee Sines and Koheiser standing up in the line and it is Koheiser that is victorious. Cleared the ball out, but unfortunately to a Castile player, that's Jenna Custer. She takes a shot with her left foot, and goes just outside the right post. Castile not afraid to take shots from outside the 18. Could have got the goalie off her line. She had been on target. I know, I know we've mentioned her a lot tonight, but that play there by Sierra Koheiser on the wing, guarding signs, one of, the, one of the most tricky and talented on the ball players for Castile. The ball then goes towards the middle to Custer, and who's there? It's Koheiser, who went from the wing back towards the middle to play defense. Great work ethic and just work out there by Koheiser. There's Custer again sending a ball through to Morgan Lewis who will kick it off of Greer as she comes out to defend her goal. But unfortunately she gives up a corner kick here for Castile. Now Castile is dangerous on their set plays. This is the fourth corner, excuse me, third corner of the night for Castile. And it is Jenna Custer who will take the corner. She plays it out top to where Maake is. Maake not really to get anything on it. We saw, the, oh, sorry. Go, go ahead, James. We saw, <laughs> like we mentioned earlier, we've seen a different 
a couple different corner tactics from Castillo there, crowding around the keeper, Make, the only person towards the penalty marker spot, and the ball goes to, goes to her first touch. Not the best touch, but just Castillo changing the tactics they have, trying to keep Gilbert off balance. Yes, having good and diverse set plays is, is a great quality that a soccer team should have. Ooh, that was a good ball played in by Renee Sines. Morgan Lewis tried to get on the end of it, but did not, unfortunately. We are 10, a little over 10 minutes into the half. I'm Emily Carmen here with James Malamus. Said it right that time. <laughs> there we go. We're providing you play-by-play -play and color commentary of tonight's matchup. Steel is up 4 to nothing. Koheiser doing a good job there as Castile won the goal kick and she won it back. Good job winning the second balls there. There's Lewis. Oh, the ball went out of bounds there. And so I was trying to say there's Lewis trying to run down the line, but I couldn't really get anything on it. Deflected off the Gilbert player. Oh, and there's another corner kick for Castile. Now, Jenna Custer has been doing a really great job of serving these balls in. Her last couple of balls have been out away from the top, away from the goal towards her. Her play is waiting at near the top of the box, but this one she curves in. There was no one on the end of it. Morgan Lewis is out there in the back post trying to serve it back in. She takes a shot, but it is caught, saved, and then caught by Greer. Greer did a little trick, saved the goal with her foot, and ball popped right up into her hands that was lucky good good reactions there by Greer a lot of people in front of the box and in front of in front of her right there in that six yard box excuse me so quick reactions there Morgan Lewis with a low driven shot we were able we were able to get her feet on it yeah Greer has had some really good saves tonight and then some goofs we'll call them she's now in a red jersey if you noticed during the first half she took some time to put on a red penny after some miscommunication with uh, one of her players due to the dark color of her jersey and the dark color of the Castile's jerseys. Oh, and that was a very hard hit. That was this. Flores again. Already yeah. already with the yellow card, the ref seems to be having a conversation with her. Flores again came in like a linebacker in that one. I'm not even sure she was trying to go for the ball, but she, she hit, I believe that was Morgan Lewis might be mistaken really hard. Ref's having a discussion with her now. She has already had a yellow card. Seemed like a, like a dangerous play that could have resulted in a red. The ref seems to be forgiving this evening. And Jenna Custer will take a free kick. Another set play for Castile. A very long conversation there with Flora is really took like about a minute to step aside and talk with her already with a yellow like like we mentioned so very risky tackle there by her there's custer played it outside to white who played it out to natalie lewis has taken to take a shot with her left foot and unfortunately career tried to pick up that shot from natalie lewis and it just slipped under her legs not sure who will be awarded the goal. I believe Renee Sines followed through and, and kicked the ball into the net, but I'm not sure if it had rolled through Gear's legs before Sines touched it. So that will probably be a goal for Renee Sines, I'll say, but it was a great shot by Lewis with her left foot outside trying to keep the play alive. And fortunately, that, as we talked about, another little mistake by Greer. She needs to do better holding on to the ball. Seems like steel coach Jason Hammond's having some words with the ref. Not sure if it was about that tackle a moment ago that happened by Flores. It, it seemed like the the coaches from Castile were a little unhappy that she got away with without a card or anything. So a little conversation there after the goal. Yes, well, Coach Hammonds is trying to keep his players safe, and that was sort of a rough tackle. But nonetheless, the set play that was received from that tackle uh, resulted in a goal, so the Colts are now up five to nothing with 25 minutes to play. Yeah. 
Gilbert fighting for control in the final third of the field. Get a cross in. It's cleared by Castile out to the left side where Morgan Lewis is waiting for it. Has control of the ball, trying to play it through. There she sees her sister, Natalie Lewis, who has speed, but fortunately, Natalie not able to get a foot, by, foot on it. And it's knocked out by Gilbert. Lily Steenhard playing such a deep CDM role for Castile in this game that every time the ball gets near the 18-yard box for Gilbert, there's always always about three people around the ball, whether it's, it's Steenhard or Wheaton or Maaka. There's, there's just always always a group of people there. Cross in there. Now Morgan Lewis fighting for it in the box, but it's cleared by Gilbert. Gilbert has possession of it just inside their defensive half. It's played outside to Gracie Peru, who plays it up to Kowitz. And now Watts with the ball, driving towards the Castillo back line, except she's going more towards the right field line. She takes a shot with her left foot from way outside the 18, and it was a, was a hard strike, but stayed on the ground and was an easy pickup for Kaler, who hasn't had much to do this game. It was a little, a little better offense there by Gilbert, connecting some passes, a couple bad touches, but they were able to retain possession. So, so something that you can see if in these last... 24-ish minutes if they can they can improve on that and build on that. Well, as we've been saying, Gilbert has, has been doing a fine job with possessing the ball, connecting their passes, but it's just within that final third, they haven't been able to get the ball in the box and really take a good shot. Their only shots have come from outside of the box and then pretty easy saves from Kaler. Now Gilbert with the ball outside, throwing it in, up the left field line. Steele's coming away with it. Here's Rustad driving up the left field line. She throws it back into Morgan Lewis. Morgan Lewis shot hard. Rustad with it out again, fighting just on the outside of the box to keep the ball. She plays it back out to Morgan Lewis who sends it in for a cross. There's someone on the back post. That's Renee Sines, but she was not able to get there in time. A beautiful cross by Morgan Lewis. Just went right outside the left goal post. Renee Sines was running in to try and get a, a foot on it, but did not make it. Yeah, great ball there, like you said, by Morgan Lewis. Goalkeeper caught, caught towards the near post, had a turn and run towards the back post. Lucky for her. Renee Sines unable to catch up to it. As we, it seems like we have a goalie substitution for Gilbert. You're correct. We had some uh, substitutions from Castile entering the game. Georgia Jasper, Marissa Guevara. And now the new goalie for Gilbert is Taylor Bevel, junior goalkeeper, enters the game. We'll see if she can make some good saves. Now, Greer's performance overall was not terrible. She made a really great save in, in the first half, got a touch on it that made the goal redirect to the ball and gave it up for a corner kick after a really nice shot by Tori Brown. But unfortunately, she's had just a few too many bobbles this evening and has made a couple of goal-giving mistakes, which is the opposite of what a goalkeeper is supposed to do. So now they're giving uh, Bevel a look. Yeah, like you said, some, some really good plays there by Greer. But when you're playing a team of Castile's caliber, one of the top teams in the state won the 5A state championship last year. They they take advantage of those mistakes. Like we saw those two bobbles there by Greer, both of them being put away for goals. So in games against talent like this, it, it's really hard. You can't really make those kind of mistakes. Exactly. When you're playing a team against Castile who constantly has players following up the goal, a really great quality to have in a team when you have your players follow every shot. Unfortunately for the opposing team, that means there can be no mistakes from the goalkeeper. It's either a catch or you knock it out as far as possible. 
Gilbert controlling the ball here in the middle. Gonna play it forward where it's cleared out by the Castile defense. Now with it on the outside, Castile has the ball. Dettinger not yet back in the game for Castile. Well, interesting to see what this kind of lead, only 20 minutes left, to see if, they'll, if she'll enter this game again. But Jenna Custard, who we saw, or Custer, excuse me, who we saw in warm-ups tweak her ankle. She's been in and making big plays, and she has the ball. Not, uh, oh, excuse me, no, that's Renee Sines. But Custard's been making big plays throughout the game, and I don't believe she's come out, so good to see that her ankle's okay. Yes, that is good. She is a phenomenal player for this team. This is her fourth year on the varsity team, four assists. She scored 11 goals last season. So she is a goal scorer. She hasn't had any yet this season. She's still looking for her first one, but she is a great ball distributor and has really helped this team in the midfield. There's Castillo winning the goal kick. But it is quickly cleared out by Gilbert. Jenna. Marissa Guvara there throwing the ball in to Jenna. Morgan Lewis. Jenna Custer. Sorry. Jenna Custer, one of the uh, seniors on this team, going to GCU next year. Also attending GCU with Renee Sines, both playing soccer there. So good to see some teammates from high school who will be continuing to play together at the next level. Yes, it is. They will have a great time playing college soccer. Guevara with the ball, sending it into Sines, who has to run for it. And the keeper, Bevel, gets her first action of the night, just collecting the ball after it's gone out of bounds. She's going to have another goal kick here. Steele does a good job winning these goal kicks in the air. It would help if, if Gilbert could win them and, and continue them up the field. Exactly what I mean there. Marissa Guevara wins that ball. After an attempt by Gilbert Morgan Lewis with it now. She plays it all the way outside to Alexandra White. Tries to take it up the field, but is blocked by Gilbert. She still has it in for the throw. Plays it inside to Captain Steenhard. It's cleared out by Gilbert. Oh, and now Gilbert with a good chance here. That's Kowitz with the ball. Kowitz got a good little header on it, was able to send it over the head of Captain Senior Maake. Tried to run with it, but unfortunately got tripped up and, and was defended well. The Castile defense wasn't far behind her, and there was a foul. So now Maake with the kick, sending it back up the field. Renee Sines collects it, uses it to turn. She's going for it. Plays it inside, slips the defenders. That's Frohart with the ball. She lost it. Still in Castile's possession, though. Sines now out at the left side line. Plays it down the line to Steenhart. Tries to cross it in, but it is deflected out by Gilbert for another throw in. Signs put on a little passing clinic there. Great through ball there to Frohart, who got it in the box. And even right there on that, that little pass out to Steenhart, nice little fancy pass there. Rivera sends it in. And Renee Signs collected it, turned, did a 180, and shot it hard with her right foot. But that was a good save there by Bavel. Now in. She did not catch the ball, but blocked it away and then was able to scoop it up. Luckily, no Castile. Players were inside, but that's exactly the kind of thing you can't do, as we were talking about earlier. Here's Gilbert again running forward with the ball. Kowitz with it now. She cuts inside, and she takes a great shot. Chipped it a little bit over the head of Kov Kaler. Luckily, it hit just inside the right post and deflected out into the 18 yard box where Castillo was able to clear it out. That was the best opportunity Gilbert has had all game. A, an opportunity to 
lose the shutout for Castile. What a hit there by Kowitz. Just gets past the defender. Nice little cutback move. Takes the shot. Hits the inside of the post. I thought it was going to hit the post, go across and go in, and it didn't. And luckily for Castillo, just rolled out. What a, what a play there by Kowitz. That was really, really unfortunate. Every player on the Gilbert bench was excited for that one. They had jumped up onto their feet, but fortunately it just hit the post the wrong way and <laughs> did the opposite of, of what Gilbert wanted there. Gilbert still in possession with it now, are in the final third. Got a throw in here by Anna Ruffley. Just kidding, it will be Koheiser who takes the throw. We'll see if she has a long throw here. She does, she throws it in long, but it is cleared out by Castile. Sabado sends it out to Watts. Gilbert still in possession right outside the 18. Watts sends it in, oh, and that was a really, really great block by Castile there. Kowitz was sneaking in if that if that ball had gone past the Castile defense right there. Kowitz would have had an easy shot on target, but instead it is cleared up the field all the way back to Bavel. Sends it right back up into Gilbert's territory. Gilbert really, really putting the pressure. You see Koheiser, one of the best defenders on on Gilbert, she's pressing up, she's staying up the field more, so really aggressive attack here by Gilbert late in the second half. Seems they have switched positions for Kohlheiser. She's she's not sprinting back to defense as she usually sees her doing every time she gets on the offense. She's staying up high now and is hoping to contribute to Gilbert's offensive line. Before the game, Coach Holzer, Gilbert's Coach Holzer said Kohlheiser was his best player on the team when she's having a good night, the team's having a good night. But in my opinion, she's been having a good night tonight, but uh, fortunately hasn't been enough against the Castile Colts ranked third in the state right now. I believe behind Prescott and Pinnacle. Castile with the ball at the top of the box and a really great placement there. And now the game is six to zero. There was a good ball sent in by Marissa Guevara. And a good hard shot right past the keeper. It hit right on the right side inning. I'm still not sure who kicked that in. I haven't seen her number yet. And I believe that was Renee Sines. All right, another goal. Really, it wasn't Renee Sines. It looked like Scarlett Frohand. Not, I'm not sure. <laughs> in any case, six nothing here. It was either Renee Sines or Scarlett Rohan, who looked who looked very similar from where I'm sitting currently, but it was a great goal, nonetheless. Good hard shot, hit the right post side netting, slipped right past keeper Bavel. And there's a, a hard ball taken off the face there by a Gilbert player. She heads directly towards the bench. You can see her head tilted back a little bit, so maybe hit in the nose there, maybe a little bloody nose. Hopefully she's okay. As she sits down now. But like, like we said, Castile just relentless in their attack. Up 5 nothing, less than 15 minutes ago. They're still attacking. They're still going hard. They get the goal there. Really just, just showing that they're hungry. They won the state championship last year, but they're not satisfied with just being an undefeated team. They want to be one of the best in the state. Exactly. They want every goal they can get. They will, they will never let up. We might see some subs in these last 12 minutes of the game. Coach Hammonds has been putting some subs in, getting some of the younger players some minutes when his team is up by a, by a good sum. Scuvara fighting for the ball down the side there. She plays it in to Frohart. 
Koheiser with a good pass into Watts. Watts trying to take on two Castile defenders. It's ricocheted off of Maake and then cleared out by Castile. I've noticed that Kyra Borton has come back in the senior. She started the game in goal. It is senior night. She is now back on the field getting some minutes. Hasn't, hasn't gotten any minutes prior to this game, so good to see her on the field getting some action. She's now playing, yes, in the midfield. Not have to play in goal anymore. She had, like you said, about one minute in the goal. <laughs> Actually, not even. A couple seconds because the Gilbert cleared the ball out right away after play resumed, but now she's there in the midfield hoping to contribute to Castile's win tonight. And there she is with the ball. Good win by her. She's taking it down the right field line. She crosses it in. Good cross in to Frohard, who was offsides. I'm sorry, excuse me, that was signs that time. I'm done mixing them up. Yeah, Frohard, usually with the sleeves up, like we said in the first exactly. half, the sleeves are back down now. She rolled them down. I, I, can't, I can't tell who she is anymore. As soon as we said that, she decided to take them down and start tricking us of who she was, but we'll get that figured out. <laughs> Yes, always good to look for some some identifiers in these players. We are up here in, in the press box, and unfortunately we forgot our binoculars this evening, and their numbers are so small. Why don't they make the numbers bigger? Good question for debate for next time. And Gilbert's, Gilbert's yellow numbers, exactly. they're hard to see. They're not outlined very, very darkly. So yellow it's numbers hard. on white jerseys. They're hard to see. Here's Frohart, oh no, Frohart without the ball. She thought they had it in for the throw in, but Gilbert will take the throw. It's one back, one back immediately almost by Castile. Signs plays Frohart in, and she knocks it off the Gilbert player for another corner kick for Castile. That's five for this game. Jenna Custard will take it as usual. Doesn't seem to be having any problems with that right ankle right now. She's been taking all these free kicks, set play kicks with her right foot and she sends it in. It's good curved ball into the goal. And that was Sines who got ahead on it but hit it off the top of her head and it went up over the goal. Sines, such a dynamic player. We've seen her on the left side, we've seen her on the right side, we've seen her in the middle. She's She has the trust from the coach to be able to drift anywhere she wants and even there we see her trying to win the ball in the air so not the tallest player 5-2 but the senior very talented going to GCU next year with Custer so just very talented all around player there for that Castile team indeed here's Maake with the ball another talented player the center back joining in on the offense as she dribbles up the entire field plays it out to Guvara, who plays it in to Signs. But apparently Signs was offside. She came back onside. Received that ball. She had a good look. She was playing it back to Mayake, who would have gotten a good cross in. Fortunately, she was not on sides. So Bevel will take the kick. Yeah, I was watching watching Signs trying to hold that run. And I, I thought she was able to, but at the last minute, the flag went up for offsides there. Morgan Lewis still in the game this evening. The senior has not been subbed out yet. She's been doing great. On the offensive line, seems now she's playing on the defensive line. Originally was a defender, came on to play defense, but has been Doing good things for Castile up in the forward line. Here's Alexandra White on the outside. Something I've noticed is Castile, they've brought back in all their senior players, field players, obviously still in goal, is Kaler, but all their field players are back in. Flam, who started. Orton, who started. All back in now. So with just under seven minutes left here in the 
second half. They've brought back all the seniors to play together. Indeed, they have, and trying to get all their seniors as much as they can. And there, Jenna Custer goes down on the outside of the corner kick. As we've been saying, she seemed to twist her ankle earlier today during, during warm-ups, and now she's on the ground. Seems to be that same ankle. We will see the trainer running out across the field. And that, uh, that's tough to see Jenna Custer, one of, one of the many seniors on this team and one of the many leaders. So, like we said, we were watching her throughout the game. She seemed to be okay just now over there at the corner position. She put pressure on it, but then it just seemed to kind of give out underneath her as she goes down. And, and as we get later and later into the season, senior night tonight, playoffs quickly approaching. We saw Dettinger go down earlier. Castile looking to repeat as champions. They want all their players healthy and at 100%. So it, it's it's tough to watch games like this where Dettinger goes down, Custer goes down now, and they lose key pieces. Yes, indeed. You never want to lose any players, but especially some of your, your key players, such as Custer and Jenninger. That is Marissa Guevara outside taking the corner kick, I believe. Lily Steenhart came on for Custard. You can see her with the captain band waiting at the top of the 18, and now it seems there's another injury on the field. The Gilbert players is, is kneeling near the left post. She has walked off the back of the field, joining the athletic trainer was minutes ago helping Custard off the field. Custer, excuse me. Clock has stopped. Now another corner from Castile. Frohart serves in a really good ball. Still bouncing around inside the box, but a good catch by Bavel. Now with six minutes left, it is six to nothing as my partner James Malamus mentioned. All the seniors are back on the field for senior night. Castile is still going hard, trying to get as many goals as possible. Both teams continuing to play hard. It's a six nothing game with five and a half minutes left, but we see these players still going at it. And, and although Gilbert looking like they, they won't win this game, but there's always a sense of pride in these games. And so you, you don't want to give up, but you always want to keep giving in your 100%. So it's, it's good to see these girls out here still going at it. Exactly. This Castile team has a lot of pride, and they're going to play their best, and they're going to perform no matter who's on the field. All seniors, all starters, doesn't matter. They, this team goes hard all the time. Here's Morgan Lewis out with the ball. She throws it into the Gilbert box. Frohart competing with Koheiser there, and Koheiser, very, very strong player, but gives up a, a foul. Now a set piece for Castile. Morgan Lewis now, as we mentioned before, playing in the back line, will not be in for this kick. It is Maake, Maake who will take it. A couple yards outside of the 18, she seems like she's gonna send it in. Ref setting up the wall 10 yards away. Gilbert with the four-man wall. Here's the kick from Maake. A really great ball in. It had just enough curve of it for it. It looked really good, but it was also great coverage by Vavel. She jumped and was able to cover the goal and Maake kicked it impressively right in between the goal post and the field goal post. I love the aggression there by Maake. Up 6 nothing, under four minutes left to go. Not too far away from the 18-yard box. So why not let her rip? She's got the leg. She takes the deep free kicks. She got some curve on it too and inches over the bar. Very impressive kick there. Gilbert with the ball now. Watts just on top of the 18 with a slide tackle by Morgan Lewis. 
sent the ball away. And now Castile in possession. Dribbling up the field is Alexandra White. She competes with Koheiser and retains possession, but then gives it away. Got some back and forth going here between Gilbert and Castile. Castile with it now in the right field line. There are signs with it now outside. She shields it out. It's another throw in for Castile. Quick throw. White with the ball now, sends it in. The top of the 18. And Frohart is there. The ball is bouncing around. She still has possession. Shot! And it misses just outside the left post. Really good shot, really good ball control there by Frohart. The ball was bouncing around, but she was able to bring it down and get a really good hard shot with her right foot. Just missed right outside the goal. Frohart, great control inside the box. The Gilbert defender's not really taking a step at her, kind of letting her stand there. She, she makes her move, gets a good foot on it, but just like you said, just hits it wide. Now Marissa Guevara plays the ball outside to Signs. We saw Frohart in there, tried to give her a nice solid pass into the box, but was blocked away by Gilbert. Now Morgan Lewis plays it out wide to Alexander White, who just wasn't ready for it, wasn't making that run. Lewis thought she was. Gilbert with the ball now, just trying to get it onto the other half of the field. Castile has really dominated this half, keeping, keeping the ball in, in Gilbert's half this this whole, this whole second half. Competition here between Koheiser and Lewis. Koheiser comes away with it. Gilbert in possession now. But knocked away and Renee signs giving chase. And there's Kyra Burton. The little miss hit sends it out of bounds. Gilbert will throw. A little bit of sloppy play there from both teams. Ball just flying up and down the pitch. And we have a, a substitution. They wanted Jenna Custer back in the game. She just came off a couple minutes ago with an apparent ankle injury. There is less than a minute left in the game, but it is senior night, and they want the senior. Jenna Custer, big part of this team. They want her on the field with them as they celebrate senior night and this 6 nothing win. Ref stops the play to make sure Custer is ready in goal. And she is. She said, I'm good. Play really, will resume. Really cool to see Coach Coach Hammonds. Is, you can just tell his care for the players. So it, it means a lot for Custer to be back out there with her teammates. So putting her in goal with a minute left, it, it's a really cool, cool moment. Indeed. They started the game with all 11 seniors on the field, and they – intend to finish it with all 11 seniors. You can probably hear now the Castile bench is going crazy, trying to give their seniors a great send off, a great environment here as there are not so many fans. The ball just on Castile's side of the half. They're just trying to get it out at this point. And there's a good clear, last clear of the game by Steenhart, who had a goal today. And the game is over. And the younger players rush the field to surround those seniors on senior night. Give them all the love. It was a great win. Six to nothing here at Castile High School. Just a really great game. James, what are your what are your takeaways from tonight's game? Well, Castile proved why they're why they're one of the top teams in the nation. They're they're going hard. They're 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 they're, they're continuing to play the great six nothing victory. Their fifth shutout of the season so far for Castile. Great offensive play. Great defensive play. Gilbert, they didn't give up at all. Even towards the last second, they were playing hard. Good game by them. Greer, 
Good night goal, a couple of mishaps. She was eventually subbed out, but she definitely should not be discouraged from this game. Exactly. Next up for the Colts, they will be on the road at Verado. And for Gilbert, they will be on Hor at Horizon next Tuesday on their home field. We look forward to seeing these teams again, and we thank you so much for tuning in with us this evening. This senior night, Castile walks away with another win, moving their record to 7-0 and with a 6-0 win. I'm Emily Carmen here with James Malamus. We thank you so much for tuning in. Have a good evening. No, 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 no.